time for another Reckless Story Time, part two of Reckless Beginnings. <laughs> In the last video, I talked about how Reckless Tortuga got started from nothing to all the way up until basically we became full-time YouTubers, which was end of 2010, definitely by New Year's 2011, we did this full-time. YouTube paid our bills, and it was me, Jason, and Eric. We had just come off doing, first we did the basement, which was our first like web series. And then we also did our first four part series of Online Gamer, which was Black Ops. So from that, we were like, okay, we really enjoyed block shooting it. I felt like we were making a TV show or making a movie. And we just got very inspired. And we started coming up with tons of, you know, four part things we could do. We also started getting contacted by studios and production companies who were looking for web series and they wanted to fund series or take your series and put it on their platform or like you know everybody in in the business and hollywood whatever was starting to be like oh wait what is this digital platform what is youtube and we're trying to get in on it so we were taking a lot of meetings at the time and because of that we were coming up with different series and pitches for different companies and a lot of which went nowhere, you know, some did. But anytime we came up with something that, you know, the deal fell through on, or they were like, oh, we're just gonna take one, you know, the other one we're not gonna take. We were like, well, we still love that idea. We're gonna make it. One of those was Paranormal Dicks. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm being haunted. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so we're all set up in here. We're gonna be monitoring you from the other room, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so no masturbating. <laughs> I'm just kidding, unless you can do it quietly. Okay. And you can't use the bathroom either. So hold in till the morning. Sweet dreams. <laughs> that was with Eric and I, and we played like, weird conspiracy theorist private detectives who would investigate paranormal things. It was a lot of fun. We had a little bit of a budget for it. So I remember we hired a friend of ours to do the wardrobe on it. So we bought some like cool stuff and we did hair and makeup on it. And we still did it in our style of which we call run and gun where we, we used people's houses that we knew and we owned all of our equipment. So we still filmed it with actors that were, you know, still working full time at their jobs or on shows or whatever. So we were still shooting a lot of nights and weekends with everybody. Then we did more Psycho Girlfriends. Mm, hello, legs. She is hot. She's tall. She's like a ch shaved Chewbacca. Gives me a boner. She has beautiful eyes. Oh, no. Crazy eyes. So now I think we were starting to do season two, which was fun. And then we wanted to do more of these four part online gamers. So the next one we did, the second one was Revenge. which was based on the LARP in the park online gamer. We did it with the LARPers versus Aaron and like a, a group of his like FPS gamers in, you know, a kind of like hostage situation. What's up my Hold your tongue. This court and the citizens of Azeroth find you, Mr. Dark Elf, guilty. That shoot was actually really fun. Gosh, it's so funny to remember these things. We were in, what were we, like in a warehouse somewhere. Again, like shooting all night long until like people were like losing their minds. We had paintball guns. We had tons of actors. There were action sequences. It was wild. And there was so many actors. So that, that was a huge shoot. I think after we did that, we were like, whoa, fun, but we need to take a minute. That was 
I guess the first time we worked with Angie was in the, the LARP episode of Online Gamer. And then she was definitely in the Revenge. I'm trying to think if we had worked with her before that, but I don't think so. The thing that I really noticed about this period of time was how much we did. As soon as we did this full time, we immediately started doing two releases a week. Before that, one was about all we could handle. We had tried a couple times to do two, but it was like, we, when we were working full-time jobs and doing this, it was too much. So now we're going for two, three, if we can, videos a week. And we made so much. We just worked our friggin' asses off. And again, never thought of it as work. I remember somebody asking me one time, like, what do you do for work? And I remember saying, I don't work. I just do YouTube. And it's just a funny thing because that was my job. But it, like, I just, it was such, so fun. It was like, I couldn't even, it wasn't work. I get to make whatever the f I want with my friends. It's great. Okay, Jason and I are engaged at this point. And we have moved into the house that I think we, we filmed so many things in that house. Like it's where Online Gamer House Party, we filmed that right kind of when we had just moved into this house. And that's the first time I think you see that house. And then after that, that house is in so many of our videos. Um, it was a perfect house for filming. That's where we did Bad Friends in that kitchen. So after the four-part revenge, we did another web series that we had been working on called Epic Theater. Megatron! Prime! What are you doing? Humans Ow. don't deserve to live! They deserve to choose for themselves! And you will die with them! Join them in extinction! Ow! Stop it! That's... What are you doing? That's not what we practiced! But that is what Megatron would do in this moment. The story of it was that we, it was a group of theater kids that wanted to make blockbuster movies into staged productions. It had like a story of with like, you know, the theater kids like struggling to be cool, but then we would see their also staged productions. And the first one we did was Transformers. Really fun to film. We rented a theater. I played Optimus Prime, which we made this awesome cardboard Optimus Prime that really transformed from a truck into the robot. I think Dovin made it. He's very crafty. I'm trying to think if I can remember the monologue. Before, Before time, time began, began there was the cube. cube. We, we know, know not where it comes from, from. Only, only that it holds, holds the power to, to Only that it holds the power to create worlds, worlds and fill them with life. That, that is how our race was born. born. For a time we lived in peace. Oh God, I can't do this. But like all this is stupid. I should never be to do this. Great power. Some wanted it for good and others for evil. I cannot believe I remember that. That was like eleven years ago. <clears throat> Probably didn't totally nail it, but not bad, old lady. After Epic Theater, we did some more online gamer. We did the wedding. Lag. 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 Shut up! Lag! That was very fun. That was in the backyard of the house, the reckless house, basically. That was where we met Coochie the Clown. They call me Coochie. Coochie the Clown. The Clown Stripper. It was a fun episode. Aaron's sister got married and it was fun to see Alan Gamer at a wedding. It was a lot of work again. Like I remember our sprinklers went off in the middle of the shoot in the backyard and like Eric's parents were in it, his real parents playing Aaron's parents. That was fun. That was a good time. Then we began shooting the third season of Psycho Girlfriend. I believe that's where we had Marcus who was like Psycho Girlfriend's new boyfriend who she was using to make Seth jealous, something like that. Mm. Oh, oh my god! Oh, Shittiest day ever, I swear uh, to god. Oh, uh, good for you. Can I have a napkin? It's just water. Relax. Here. Bitch. How dare you treat her like that? Go back there and get a bunch of napkins, club soda, and baking powder, and learn some goddamn manners while you're at it. I'm Noah. <gasps> like the notebook. I'm Brandy. We were still doing, you know, random sketches here and there, and so that's when we did shit on the face, which was I think called Bad Friends Face. What, dude? What is that? You got something on your lip. Huh? Where? Right there. What is that? <laughs> oh. Oh, I think it's shit. Whoa, dude, gross. How did you get shit in your face? Probably because I just took a shit in the bathroom. Dude, are you kidding me? That's your own shit in your face? Yeah. Relax. Don't act like you've never gotten sh on your face. That was such a fun sketch to write, to shoot, and the Bad Friends series might be my favorite thing to write. I get that question a lot, like, what's your favorite thing to write? And I love everything I write, honestly. Like, I, there's nothing that I don't like. 
like online gamer was always fun, but I did so many of them that it became like automatic for online gamers. But bad friends was one of those things that when I would think about these characters or what they might say or how they would respond or the weird shit they're gonna do, it would make me laugh out loud. Like I would just be in there writing going, ha, 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 like, like a psycho, but I, I loved writing it. And just when we would come up with those, like me, Eric, and Jason, we I don't think we ever laughed as hard as when we would come up the, with the situations for bad friends. After that, we did the four part online game our second chance. Rick, come on, please, dude. All right, I screwed up, okay? I screwed up, I'm sorry. No, Aaron, you cannot have your job back. Rick, dude, I'll do whatever you want. I will do whatever you want. I will kiss your asshole. I will suck the customer's c Rick, please. I guess this is around the time, oh no, it was definitely at the same time. Eric started having these funny issues with his neighbor. So his neighbors were being weird and he would tell us these funny stories. And that was how Creepy Neighbor, the series we did, where that came from. Hey. Oh, hey, you're my new neighbor. Yeah, look, I just wanted to apologize. Oh, for what? Oh, you're really sweet. But no, we just, we just wanted to say we're really sorry. I really don't know what you're talking about. Is anything that I said that just freaked you out or just like really put you over the edge? I just want to say that wasn't me. I'm really sorry. I wasn't going to burn the whole apartment complex down in the middle of the night while everyone was sleeping. I wasn't gonna do that. From some real things that happened to Eric. And I remember because his neighbors knew about Reckless Tortuga. And so he was like, oh, put this out. He was like panicked that his neighbors were gonna see it and know it was them. After like one or two episodes, we started drastically changing it so that he could be like, no. And I feel like his neighbors confronted him on it even. Something happened and because we had changed enough in the story of, and by like episode three or something, he was like, <laughs> it's not based on you. And also he was like, I don't even write that series. Lindsay writes it, even though Eric and I wrote it together. And that was a really fun one to shoot, really simple. I think we've started filming that to camera, which makes things way easier. When you can film two camera, it's great because you can talk over each other. If you're filming one camera, you have to kind of keep each other's dialogue clean and you can't like fully react in the moment. You have to sort of like pick your moments. Whereas two camera, everything you're doing is being captured at the same time. So you can get a lot more comedy from it. It's way faster. So. All those things I just said that we had made, it had only been six months since we started doing this full time. So I'm pretty sure we made more content in that six months than in the like two and a half years where we did it part time with, with jobs. So it just goes to show you like how much we were capable of doing. What we were doing was kind of crazy. Like when people, we would meet with production companies or a studio, they'd be like, all right, who's your team? What are you? And we'd be like, it's just the three of us. People would be like, how? are you doing that? And to us, we were like, what do you mean? Like, Jason is, he's a filmmaker. He went to film school. I studied writing. Eric is is, is an actor in the business who's like an, an amazing producer. I don't know. I, I, it was just one of those things that like, it was cool what we, what we could accomplish. And we never really thought about it until people would kind of react to it and be like, what you guys are pulling off is wild. And then we were so lucky to have so many amazing actor friends. Like every person in our video up till this point is our friends. And they're all just great actors. Like how lucky are we? Cause we were using a lot of people. The next thing we did was online gamer rehab. Right this way. What is this shit? Uh, Aaron, I'm sorry. I don't like to start things off this way. I don't like to use deceitful tactics. Y your mother thought it was the only way. What the f are you talking about? Aaron. Welcome to Gamer Rehab. What? No! 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 Hey! Let me out! No! Ah! Let me out! Oh my god, I'm so bored! Look, okay, I get it. I get it. I'm cool now. You can totally let me out. I'm dying. You know what, Jimmy? Your mom should have had a f***ing oh. suck in my D. And we do it! Can you show us what a packed virgin looks like, huh? Is one more bitch online. Headshot, bitch! You just got owned. Which was a bigger production. Also, again, we filmed that in a friend's house that looked kind of like a like, retreat, like their home was in the woods. Oh, and then I, Eric lived, he lived in like a cabin in Echo Park and a friend lived in another cabin nearby. So it was a perfect situation for paranormal dicks, and for rehab. Then we started our series for 
nextmovie.com. So we signed a deal with them. They were going to fund the sketch show for their website where it was sketches that were movie themed that would appear on their site and we would promote it from our channel. So every week we chose our favorite sketch from like the three or four we made for their website and we aired that on our channel to kind of be like, go check out this website. That was really fun because right away we put together a writer's room and we sort of treated it like we were making a television sketch show. We had all of our friends that we knew were creative and good at like the writing part of comedy and we would pitch on ideas, talk about what movies were coming out. You know, sometimes we did, you know, we made fun of older ones, but most of the time we tried to be topical with what movie was going to be coming out that week and we made sketches. So we wrote them throughout the week. Then we spent all day Sunday from early morning till the night filming everything in one day. And everybody was getting paid like real money this time, like all of our actors, all the production. We were hiring like actual producers and we were paying for locations and we had catering with like more than just pizza. Uh, I think we didn't order pizza at all because at this point we have eaten four years of pizza. That was a lot of fun. It was, it was, the writer's room was a blast. All day Sunday was so much fun. And we came up with the weirdest stuff. Got a little, little call, a domestic disturbance call. 2473, the worst kind. Musical disturbance. Dead police! Open up! Open the door! Kick it in. Freeze! Freeze! Stop moving with me, please! Stop moving with me! Stop! 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 When you have to make a sketch about something very specific, there's something, I don't know, there's something about the fun of like forcing ourselves to make something that we're like, how are we gonna make this funny? And then I don't think everyone agreed that everything we made was funny, but some of our favorite sketches are from there because it was just so freaking weird. One, two, three. I don't have a plan. Smile, hitting them, and I saw me and I say it. Horrified. Oh, oh. Bravo! Bravo! And fun. So while we did Extra Butter Please, we also did um, the Online Gamer four-parter Revive. We did Modern Warfare 3, the four-parter. And we did more Psycho Girlfriends. We did more Creepy Neighbors. We did Bad Friends. And we did the Online Gamer Nemesis. I thought you said this wasn't a circle jerk. What the hell? What are you doing here? Are you having a LAN party or not? Oh yeah, I'm having one. But I didn't invite you so no, not for you. Actually, you did invite me, loser. I'm Danny. You practically have sex with my leaderboard ranking when you emailed me. Dude, this is Danny? You're a liar! You're a bitch! That was our first time working with a kid. And so we, I remember we had an onset teacher and we had to apply kid hours when we were shooting. And so that was kind of fun. It was a little stressful, but it was fun. And then we started asking, you know, if any of our friends or people we knew had series or were creating things, like we would put it out on our channel and Luke, who was Creepy Neighbor, had written a series and produced it and filmed it called Park It Up. Bring it on, bring it on. My boyfriend just broke up with me and I have to move out of my apartment. Sorry. Do you have a wife or a daughter, sir? Uh, no ma'am, I do not. That's right! Because how can anybody love you? You're gonna die alone, you ass I loved Park It Up so much. So we started putting out his series, Park It Up. And then we made Online Gamer Zombies. So we were like, even like I was saying in the last video, where Online Gamer, every time we made an Online Gamer, we were like, how are we still making this a series? This feels crazy, it was never meant to be. And it was amazing all the things we did with it up until this point. And so now we're like, oh, you know, it'd be so cool. Like one thing we've never explored is because, you know, Aaron's character was obsessed with Call of Duty and zombies is a big part of that. So we were like, let's do a zombies episode. I'm going to go find the box. Oh. Open it. What? No, you open it. I want to have enough points to open the box when we find it. So do I. You have more points, so just open it. Because I'm a better player. Why should I be punished? Open it. Ow! You bitch! If you get down, I'm not reviving you. We gave ourselves a pretty big budget for it. I mean, big is hundreds of dollars, but still, that's most of the time we had no budget. And thus somebody else was funding it. But we were funding this ourselves. We decided it would be fun and sort of like a, because we made it a kind of a dream sequence where he imagines he's playing zombies and we're gonna bring back every character from Online Gamer in this to play the different like 
swarms um, of zombies. Like each round was more and more and more. So that was fun. So we brought all these people back. It was a logistical chaos. Plus we had to put use fake blood and zombie makeup. And we had airsoft guns and action sequences. And it was a lot. And we were in this like huge empty abandoned warehouse downtown that a friend of ours owned so we could be there but it was very uncomfortable and cold and it was a lot more work than we thought like I remember we'd hire someone and be like oh you're just gonna be in a quick scene and they'd be there all day and it was we were like hungry and thirsty and we were in the middle of nowhere downtown so but then there were things that were really fun about it and we were so excited to edit it and like Jason got to practice like special effects and like CGI like gunshots and blood explosions and that was really fun. We put it out and it wasn't as well received as we expected. Like we were like, what do you mean? This is like all the characters are so fun. And I think just because it was so fantastical and it was a dream, I don't know, it just didn't hit. And we were like, okay, fine. I mean, don't get me wrong. It got tons of love and it got tons of views, but it's funny how our, how we would judge things now and how we would take things like personally, like oh, we only got 500,000 views, you know, like as opposed to millions. And you take that as a loss when you're like, 500,000 people watch this. That's incredible. But that's kind of just where we were at mentally. And we were also like trying to service everyone. Like we felt responsible to every single one of our subscribers. If they came in because of a certain show, we wanted to keep giving them that show. And, and if, you know, not everybody was like interested in it, we were like, okay, we failed. We failed our audience. So we need to try harder or change things up or, you know, always trying to just be better and be really giving our subscribers what they wanted. An interesting thing that happened is that I think because Aaron in Online Gamer was such a toxic character. Yeah. As his D. As his D. You can play with us, baby d Trust fall! Trust you. Oops. He was so aggressive. Our audience embraced that and, and tended to kind of put that forth in the in our reckless community. So and not to say everybody, the majority of our audience were wonderful, amazing people. But the, the few toxic people were just very loud. They would get to us sometimes. Like we would be really upset because we would put a video out that was really funny and great, but because it was an online gamer, the online gamer fans would dislike it and just kind of hurt that video. Not because it was bad, just because it was an online gamer. And it would frustrate us because we're like, you don't have to like it, but don't hate it. There's nothing wrong with it. And that started to like affect our channel in general. We were trying to make deals with people and whatever, like like other production companies or studios, but we knew we had this phenomena of like, if we put the video out, it's gonna get dislikes. The online gamer fans are gonna revolt against it. And it made it hard because we liked making online gamer, but the way it was being demanded and the way that we were being treated, it wasn't making it rewarding. And so we were kind of struggling. We were like, we need to like, we need to figure this out. How do we keep making this series? How do we deal with this problem within our community that we created? And we many times thought, okay, we're gonna stop making the show. But then we loved making it. And it was our biggest series and people wanted it. To this day, it is still asked for on that channel. And it was just, you know, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride for us where we were like so grateful, but also it was extremely stressful. We did keep making online gamers regardless. And also we were getting meetings with production companies and studios because of the success of that series. Now, the thing that was also funny about it is no other production company or studio could really touch it because it was such intense content. But it, again, it was like the tent pole that was holding this whole thing up. So we kept making it. And again, like the gaming community, we were so involved in it and we love gaming. And there was so much fun we could have with Online Gamer and Becca and Ted and Next Gen that it was like, how could we not make it? After Zombies, some friends of ours made a series called Neurotica. We put that on, on our channel. That was a really fun, wild series. We did more Psycho Girlfriend. We did a lot more Bad Friends. Luke made some more Park It Ups. This is during this whole time where we are still struggling with the online gamer situation. We were starting to make more one-offs because we weren't sure what we were gonna do. We we're like, are we embracing this series? Are we gonna move away from it? Let's just keep making it little by little. And what are we gonna do? And then we got invited to Comic-Con. Hey guys, so we're at Comic-Con 2012. The first thing we did was we spoke on a mother panel, y'all. We were up there with some other Machinima partners and we got to talk about our new project we're doing at Machinima. We've been running into tons of people who watch our videos, which is awesome, and taking pictures with them. So it's been great meeting the fans. 
we got to go, we got to speak on a panel at Comic-Con, which was a dream come true. That trip and that experience of being on a panel and everything was one of the highlights, I think, of all of our lives. It was so much fun and it was such an honor and we had so much fun partying that weekend. <laughs> yeah, it, that was... That was awesome. And we were there really because of Online Gamer. So it was like this love, hate, appreciation, no appreciation, trolling situation was just like, above all, we love this series and people love it. And it does come from a place of loving this series. So it's not going anywhere at that point. So after Comic-Con, we did Becca's Origin. I'm here, chode face. Oh, thanks for coming, gunt lover. What's so freaking urgent? Oh, I just went to show you these pictures I found of your ugly ass online. <gasps> no! Where did you get those? I was searching on Facebook for pictures of you for my spank bank, and what did I find? Some dork named Becky who likes to sing and dance. You better delete that now. No way. I'm gonna spam your entire Xbox Live friend list with this You do that, and I'm gonna spam your entire friends list with pictures of your tiny little Around that time, I was pregnant with Jason and I's first baby. While I was pregnant, I think the only thing I did was Bad Friends Dragons. Ugh. Yo. Hey. Third round genetic testing, no results. You still don't know who the father is. News was a weird night, man. Oh, and cravings. What do you have that's pickled? Um, I think I had pickles. Oh, hello. Pickles, dragon's favorite food. Dragon's favorite. I actually, I don't think that's a saying. I never heard that before. No, yeah, it's not a saying. It's a, it's a fact. Well, I guess I gotta study up on my fantasy fiction. Note, dragons like pickles. That's weird. What are you talking about? Fantasy fiction. No, I'm talking about historical fact. Dragons like pickles. It's a fact. What? Dude, I don't know if you're messing with me or what right now, but with the hormones, what I got going on, I can't. Please don't tell me that you don't believe in dragons. Probably did some psycho girlfriends when I was pregnant, but I do a lot of screaming and like get my blood pressure goes high when I'm playing Brandy. So I didn't want to film too much when I was pregnant because I just was like, I don't think that's safe. <laughs> and I don't want my baby to see me being the psycho. I mostly just kind of wrote, I wrote my pregnant ass off. I wrote the Becca's Origin. We did, I did tons of extra butters, bad friends. I did Black Ops 2 with newborn baby Elliot sitting next to me. I wrote that. When Elliot was a couple months old, I mean, I, uh, maybe not even, we did a deal with Machinima. It was a Machinima channel that was gonna have like high quality scripted content or just high quality content on it. And they did a deal with us to make an online gamer spin-off called The Clan. Let's do this, Marines! I brought a lot of condoms to the party. Hey, are you guys my clan buddies? Mike is a noob and a bitch. Eric, stop raging out, bro. We gotta play, man! What about the tournament? Are you ready to be a man? Yes! There is always another way. Ah, I turned it off, babe! Just chill out! <laughs> You were on TV, Space Flight, Deep Planet. You, you were on it. Hey, I thought you said in your clan application that you were good. See you on mic, okay? What's up, slut? So, they funded that whole thing and had a great big budget. We did it as if we were doing, I guess it would be sort of a, the way Netflix does shows now where, the, where you do the whole season at one time as opposed to like shooting and releasing it. So we wrote the whole thing and we had to get it approved by the network executives over at Machinima and, and take their feedback. And we did a whole casting process to find all the characters. We paid for locations and props and we rented, you know, more cameras and lights and sound and we had extras. I wasn't super involved in the filming of it because I was home with baby but i did write that whole thing with elliot in my arms that really just like rekindled all the love we had for online gamer we did a ton of episodes of online gamer specific to the clan to help promote it and get people to see like go watch this series we made and now we had these new characters that could come into the online gamer um series on our channel and that was a lot of fun what Are you vlogging yeah i'm telling our story am i in it you are now <laughs> What's the story you're telling? The story of Reckless. Oh, I thought you were going to say Mexico, circa 2016. Ask what? about that, guys. What? Are... <laughs> That's very inappropriate. I'm not telling you guys anything about Mexico. Okay, so where did we leave off? So then at that time, Eric and Tommy went to E3. I feel like I should talk about Tommy. Tommy was in our very first video, Tommy Savas. He was in Stop Lease. 
and he was office douchebag. He was in all of our videos. He was always present. So he is very much like one of the founding members of Reckless Tortuga. He never was a part of the creative team necessarily. Like here and there, he would step in and do stuff with us. He was an actor and he was always hustling for an actor. And now he's working on TV shows all the time. So nowadays when we see him, we're lucky when we're blessed to have him in our videos. But he was awesome. Very talented actor, very funny. He played Seth as we know. I don't have the boner! Oh, he was Damien, an online gamer. Azeroth, unite! He did crazy stuff when we were doing Extra Butter and when we were doing Popcorn Addicts. Oh my oh gosh, you don't know! What is that? Is that you? Oh my god! So that was a lot of fun. And Tommy is great. And he also did these things with Eric and sometimes by himself where he would go to events like Comic-Con and E3 and kind of do hosting type comedy. We made on the street type stuff. Rosie the Robot, did you make this costume yourself? Yes. Is that real metal? No, it's aluminum foil and paper mache. Tin foil and paper mache, that's fantastic. So what is this costume you're wearing? Um, it's just one that I made. Do you have a name for this character? Mm -mm. Just a lovely cat, cat lady. Yeah. But not cat woman. No. The cat girl. Danielson! Hiya! <laughs> Professor X. My guy, guys, it's George Lucas. George! Mr. Lucas! Khaleesi! Khaleesi! Uh. Mm. Mm. What are you looking at, Jon Snow? Fuck you! Where am I? You can't find me. Always a fun person to have around. Tommy's great. And everybody's honestly great. Like different people came there at different times. It's not to say that, I mean, obviously nobody who isn't great, but there's also just so many, we get like, you know, Davin who is all, was always available to help in addition to acting in our stuff. And now he writes a ton of our things. Like he writes PlayStation Girl with me. He writes random sketches for us. And then he produces so much. He's a great producer. He's great at set design. He's very handy and good at, you know, pulling things off and doing logistics. So he's great. And he's also hilarious and funny as an actor. And then there's Clark who, you probably don't know because if you're a Reckless Tortuga fan, he was in one or two videos, but he's always been behind the camera from the very beginning, you know, and that's saying a lot because in the beginning, again, when we didn't pay anybody, when this was all in our free time and it, if anything, it cost us money to be in videos, he wasn't even in them. He just came to hold the camera and help out with our equipment. And he would be there before the actors and after the actors cleaning up. And just for the love of it, just for being together. Now we work together and he is now considered one of the founding members of Reckless. And he works with Jason and I, but just a great person. He, he has like an iconic laugh. Like if we can make Clark laugh, we know he's easy to make laugh. When he laughs, it's just great. You feel like it really was like a confidence boost and you knew, okay, we're doing something funny here. And he was such a fan of everything we made, which was really fun. And then there's Angie who went from being our token hot girl and like everything to us realizing, wait, Angie's actually extremely talented. And so brought her in to do PlayStation Girl and she brought so much more than we could have ever imagined to that role. And now she also is an amazing writer, so she writes sketches and performs all kinds of different characters for us. I mean, I could go on and on. We you know Lindsay Bartleson is incredible. And then there's just the thankless people behind the scenes who pull this off and have been there production-wise. But those are the people that have been with us from the very beginning to now, you know, when we hit it big and then <laughs> We went on these roller coaster rides of like, what are we doing with Reckless? They were just there for us and with us and are really part of the group. So those are kind of like key OGs, you know? After E3, we went to Comic-Con. Um, we didn't speak on a panel that time, but we, we had a great time and we did. I think we filmed an online gamer there. Gross. This is like a nerd orgy. Ugh which is not easy. I mean, you can have cameras at Comic-Con, which made it easier to film. No one's like paying really paying attention, but you know, it is tough to film like a scripted thing <laughs> where you're doing take after take of a, a sketch, but that was really fun. And when we were at Comic-Con, we met with a lot of big YouTubers, mostly gamers. And we found out that a lot of these people were big fans of ours. I think we did like a fan meetup and we were there and they were like, we were like, wait, you're, famous. Why are you here to meet us? And because of that, we started being like, would you want to be in our videos? Like at the time also, we were like looking to collaborate more. We wanted to be doing more with YouTubers because our channel was in this decline that we couldn't understand. We also were like, we want to be more involved in the community. And if people love our videos, like come be in them. So we got a few big gamers to be an online gamer. Unlocking all achievements into the lights blackout. 
Hello, gentlemen. I'm here to pick up my Pastor E3. All right, all right, hold on there. Who are you? I'm the new guy. There's no new guy. What are you talking about? Hutch. Fine, it's me, alcoholic semen thrower. Who the hell is this fiery little taquito? And I think we, you know, we even did like podcasts and things like that with these other big YouTubers. And that was really cool. And just to explain a little bit more about what was happening on YouTube is we were noticing this decline. And after, we, after a while of working on it internally going, is it because of our content? There's, we're not making enough online gamer. Da, 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 da. And we tried to be more consistent. We tried to be more, make more online gamers. We tried to make, like keep changing things. And after a while you're like, nothing we're doing is working. And we were noticing that the trend on YouTube was really more towards the unscripted vloggers and gaming and how-to videos and all that. And there really wasn't a lot of scripted going on. And it really didn't feature scripted. You know, we weren't getting on the home channel like ever or on the trending pages or getting recommended to people. It was like the algorithm just wasn't loving what we were making. You know, the algorithm obviously doesn't know what we're making, but we can't be as consistent as a vlogger. You know, we can't make hour long videos like gamers can. So we weren't doing what, what the algorithm was starting to really like. That led to us just being like, okay, we're kind of up, up against it. It's kind of a battle and it's not fun. It's very disheartening when you're just watching it, when you're like trying harder <laughs> and it's like, meow. And then at the same time, we're all starting to work on our individual careers. After all the stuff we've done in Reckless, we've now met tons of people in whatever, Hollywood. So I'm working on scripts. Jason signs up to do a feature film. Let's get her out of the house. Oh, hi. Oh. Bob has decided to go au natural. Am I making you uncomfortable? I'm not going anywhere. Did you guys eat my pizza? Have a nice trip. We're shrooming. To direct it. Um, Eric's working on scripts and projects that he has people who are going to start funding his stuff and we're still doing Reckless at the same time and trying to turn it around and sometimes being like do we what are we doing should we give up YouTube and we'd maybe think about it for like a day or two and then be like nah we love this place we're not leaving we're not leaving the channel and then we would try to pump back into it. Jason started filming his movie and he was unavailable for a few months so Eric and I you know we kept making things Without him, we were a little less consistent, but we were still keeping on the gamer going. We did some sketches together. We did a bunch of stuff. That's when we started, we did another show. So Extra Butter Please with, was technically an MTV show on MTV's website called nextmovie.com. That had ended like years before or a year before or so, something like that. Now we were working with the Stars Network, like the channel Stars, the studio. And they wanted to do a similar movie sketch show, which was called Popcorn Addicts. And it was basically the same kind of thing. We were doing topical movie themed sketches and we started putting one out on our channel and then putting it out on their website. So during the time, I think it was the time when Jason was in there, maybe he was around, but Online Gamer introduced the character of Katie where Becca and Aaron broke up and now there was another woman on the scene. So we explored a lot with that, which was really fun. Chelsea Alden who plays Katie is now all over TV. She's like a huge star. She's like probably the, one of the just nicest people. She's really funny and I love the, what she brought to Katie. I really, I enjoyed it because she made it make sense that a, a, just a good, decent person could be with Aaron. I just like how she played it where she was humored by him. Once Jason came back, Eric was starting to work on some solo projects so he was less involved here and there. And that's when we came up with the Lindsay and Lindsay show. <laughs> <laughs> she's Linda Z. And she's Lindsay. And we want to penetrate you with hard news. Or soft. Where Lindsay and I would spend Friday nights writing news sketches and we had all these different bits and things like that and segments. And we would film that all day Saturday at the YouTube studios in Culver City. So that was a fun time. It was a lot of work, but we had, we had a blast. I think her and I remember that time as just being so fun. Just besties spend a Friday night together and making that show was great. So towards the end of, I guess it was 2014, we did Hell, Michigan, which was written by a friend of ours and Jason directed it. It's inoperable, Marshall. The world's getting down from every day. It's a miracle you're still alive. Well, why couldn't his minions be here among us? The world ready for a more fitting place. 
be here for us. And it was a big budget short film that was really cool. And that went out on our channel. Then we did another web series. This is the time that we did co-op. Serious is a fatality kill. God, everyone get out! Titan, at your service. No, do not shit in this kitchen! Everyone, to your battle stations. Adam! You beat me by two and you stole at least like 20 of my kills. Dude, babe! Oh my god! which took place in the online gamers like world, but it was a another group of gamers that ended up then meeting up with Aaron. So it was a way for us to tell more stories that took place in online gamers world that weren't all just centered on Aaron. And that was a lot of fun to make. We cast that whole series through an audition process and met some great people. And we were just really going back to our sketch roots, trying to see if maybe if we get a new hit, maybe online gamers kind of waning and we need to just find a new hit. You know, like every time we had a hit, whether it started with the Racism in America series, then it went to Psycho Girlfriend, then it went to Online Gamer, each one of these series even bigger than the last. So we're like, maybe there's a new series that's gonna be even bigger. And not finding a lot of success with it. It wasn't turning things around. We weren't finding a huge big hit. So then going into 2015, we were a little bit like, what are we gonna do? And then I was offered a job on a Disney show called Gamer's Guide to Pretty Much Everything. It was on Disney XD. Nice, Connor. Want another one. <laughs> and the creators of the show saw Online Gamer and they were looking for a writer who understood the gaming world. And so they reached out to me and then after a couple interviews, I got hired and it was a dream come true. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be a TV writer and all this work on Reckless Tortuga got me to that and it was awesome. But it was a full-time job, it was a full-time gig and I wasn't gonna be able to do Reckless at the same time. I did a little bit on weekends and nights here and there, write like a one-off thing or help Jason and Eric because they did start you know, continuing on online gamer and all these things. And we had popcorn addicts and all that, but it was full-time work. And the other thing that happened at the exact same time that I got hired on the Disney show, I found out I was pregnant with our second baby. As you can see, it was going to be very busy, but Jason and Eric did awesome. They wrote everything that went out in 2015, like through the, um, like through the, into the fall. It was all them. After I had baby Violet in October, and I was on maternity leave and the show was on hiatus, the Disney show. I did come back and write Black Ops 3, the four part online gamer series. God damn, I suck at this chicken little, I should have just given you the goddamn cup. Like, what, well, actually, why did I give it you? I thought, oh, you know, I should have been playing it early, but no, Activision would be mad at me. What up, What the f who the f are you? What the f, 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 who are you? We're your what? worst nightmare and we're gonna Black Ops 3 codes out of you. What? Or else no one's ever gonna see you again. Do you, wait a minute, you do realize there's thousands of people watching this right now. What? The police will be- Oh, oh, shit. oh, oh yeah. No, 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 no. If oh, any you, of you dickless heads tells anyone about this, I'm gonna call in a health storm on your living room and make what happened to Taylor's team look like a fairy tale. Cut the stream. Fuck. On some of the series that Jason and Eric did with the Stormtroopers, a lot more bad friends, online gamers, and the Cops series was pretty big. That was a sketch show that came out of Extra Butter Please that we kept doing because we really liked the Cops series. So Jason's movie then came out, Bad Roomies, streaming now, I think it's on Hulu, but if you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch, it's great. And we hadn't really turned the channel around. Again, Jason's now taking all these meetings with production companies for his next project. What's he gonna do? He has a huge media company who wants to hire him to help them build studios and, and make shows and then, Eric is about to get funding for several of the short films he's written and, and ugh, he has like, he had a ton going on. And now I'm back on season two of the show and we realize, okay, let's just all go do our thing for a minute. We'll do our best to make a video now and then and keep the channel updated. Again, we didn't know what the future held at that point. We just knew we were all very busy. So then around summer of 2016, all of us were super busy on our solo projects. The channel was in a decline. We were still trying to maintain it with podcasts or just anything we could, not finding a lot of success with it. And then somebody offered 
to buy the channel and they were gonna make scripted content on it and it was kind of perfect. We were gonna be able to help and make the transition, but none of that went according to plan. None of it was what we expected. Um, the plan was never to take a two year break, which just ended up being what happened. There's a lot of details to it. And that will be for the next video. So up till this point, you know, we lived through like our heyday and then just the slow and steady decline on YouTube that then eventually led to, I mean, great things happening in our personal lives and great things happening in our careers and some of, you know, our dreams coming true and in our goals of our life. But the channel itself was just, was hurting. So that's where I'll leave it. If you want me to tell the next story that leads basically from selling the channel and the roller coaster storm dumpster fire that occurred for the next two years, then coming back and ending up where we are now, I could tell that story. All right, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.